Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another episode. Not sure if it will be an episode of Unplugged TV Australia. So we came back on Thursday last week from our holiday to the Sunshine Coast hinterland. And I gave the car a good rest for a couple of hours to cool the battery down and do whatever it needs to do. So just to settle down a little bit. And I recharged it from Thursday to Friday night. Thursday night, Friday morning. And I have not used the car since that day, which is today's Tuesday morning, because we had a far, um, holiday yesterday. Battery conditions were still on 29.1 last Thursday afternoon when we came back. So this will be the first time after four days I fire up the car. Um, we've got only 12 degrees outside, so um, I will charge, recharge the car at work anyway, because I have to deliver this UPS after work. Okay, so this will be the first time. Let's see if we have a drop in health again after four days of char parking. No, we don't. Wow, I'm impressed. It seems like the, the battery is more stable after the DB cam. I haven't lost... When was the last... Almost was the last at 353, eight, 900 kilometers, 900 kilometers ago, there was the last drop in battery health. So that is quite impressive. That has changed since the DB cam. That was the only positive. Oh, the battery is very cold. 15 and 17, very cold. <laughs> I know. So nothing nothing has changed in the health of the battery so far. Also interesting, we still have 95.2% state of charge in the battery after four days of parking. The EVSE was not plugged in. I unplugged on Friday morning. Battery was fully charged anyway, so there's no need to keep it plugged in. It doesn't do anything apart from using 5 watts standby power. <sighs> ah, I missed that. And we have a predict predicted range of 53 kilometers on the gasometer, or which is the result of our hybrid drive on Thursday. Here, the seat. Every time you get in, next is clunk clunk noise totally annoying totally annoying what is design flaw it doesn't do it if you push the seat all the way down or all the way up but in between the mechanic the scissor mechanic of the height adjustable driver seat makes this ugh. why wouldn't you test this before you sell such a car you shouldn't do that so we've got um after 10 kilometer drive uh, 19 and or 20 and 21 degrees now so battery has warmed up a little bit three four degrees i could potentially plug in the car straight away now at the club and recharge to 100 percent i would like to do another test because the car has now was now standing there for four days i would like to see if i still lose capacity while parking after the first initial drive you would, you would think when the car is parked for such a long time, for a couple of days, it has enough time to settle and do whatever it needs to do inside the battery chemistry. And it was only a 95% this morning when I started driving. So I would like to keep the car as it is for a couple of hours before I plug it in again and measure the capacity after the first initial parking. Um, that'll be interesting. Oh, awesome. Charger is open already. So, I arrived at work. 11.3 ampere hours used. <laughs> I didn't pay any attention on economical driving at all. <laughs> 95, 59.5% uh, state of charge. So, 17 kilometers left. It went down from 53, 52 kilometers to 17 only. <laughs> so, good guess of the meter, isn't it? Okay, let's um, park here for two or three hours and then we plug in. Oh, so, I'm 
I'm I'm late. I'm late. It's 11 o'clock already. 59.5 we've been. Um, start live data. Uh, minus 2.2 ampere hours. Down to 51. Just while parking. Amazing stuff. So it doesn't matter if you leave your car, if you leave the car parked for four days and after the initial first drive on the day it still loses energy while parking we know it doesn't really lose energy it's just a recalculation of the software apparently we don't know exactly what happens temperature is rising of the battery voltage is rising but still the bmu software calculates it as a lower capacity for some reason i don't know why okay the test um, failed again so there's nothing i can do to prevent the energy from escaping 51 percent we are plugging in now so and we are fully charged here it's so good it's so good 100.3 percent 30 degrees battery temperature that is quite a lot but it doesn't really matter because um, it's only lunch break now we've got another two and a half hours for the battery to cool down and then i'm just going to drive to the customer deliver this um ups and then i'm going home again and we'll still have about 40 percent battery capacity left until then so I don't use all the battery anyway and still the state of health has not fallen down so we need to talk about battery health anyway and not the usual not the usual negative stuff I just want to talk to you a little bit more about um, how to keep your battery healthy in the PHEV and um, other vehicles as well okay guys um, yeah so far this very short video finally I'm signing off, having my lunch break now. Okay, guys, see you then. Bye. <laughs> guys, guys, bef before I forget, one of the last videos I've shown where I tried to use the Tesla adapter on this Type 2 charging station in Ipswich, which, which totally failed. I couldn't connect the car at all. Of course, I know you can, you can just use a simple Type 2 to Type 1 adapter cable. <laughs> Of course I know that. The the reason I've I've done this with the Tesla adapter was so two reasons for that. First of all, I don't have a simple type 2 type 1 adapter cable. I only have the Tesla adapter at the moment. The second reason I've done this is I wanted to test if the Tesla adapter only works with a Tesla charging station or if it if it is compatible with usual type 2 charging stations as well which it obviously isn't but uh, some of you guys um, uh, made a comment and said look the Tesla adapter is compatible but only on tethered um, type 2 charging stations not on the one I tried because this was an untethered one there was only a test there was just a test for me trying to get this done because obviously nobody else has tried this before. I don't know. I've asked a question in the, and Russell from Evolution Australia has sent me an email as well and said, and said, nah, Andy, this doesn't work. They only work on Tesla um, destination charges. It was it was me testing again stuff. Even I probably should have known it doesn't work. I don't know. It there was, the yeah it. Of course, if you want to charge from a Type 2 station, you need an adapter cable from Type 2 to Type 1. And you can plug in your car directly to this adapter cable then. You don't need your EVSE, you don't need any other stuff, you just need this adapter cable and you can charge directly. Totally fine, totally fine. And you also know now that you cannot use the Tesla adapter for these charging stations. I have to try one of these tethered stations actually to see if uh, David is right. Yeah, this just the small video from today. I wasn't sure about the parking loss, if it still happens after the car has parked already for four days, but obviously it doesn't make any difference. That was the only reason for this test a test again. Thanks. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. 
This is Andy from Unplug TV Australia signing off. So I just delivered the UPS here to my customer and when I turned on the car again I got this message here. Your battery capacity has decreased 0.1 ampere hour. It didn't take too long actually to adjust itself and we keep losing ampere hours health and capacity and range of course of the car while we are not doing anything wrong with it. I've got I've got this bad feeling again that it won't end well with me and the PHEV actually. This is something which is not right and I'm now down to 29 ampere hours and 76.3% state of health. Okay, quick update after the video.